one o'clock. Was that the hour or the quarter? Must keep awake, Manders. He might have called up while you were dozing off. Must keep awake. Was this really me, this tow-headed youngster in nightgown and ill-fitting slippers, crouching by a window in a draughty school corridor and struggling so bravely against the numbing hand of sleep? <sighs> Caesar had some jam for tea. Pompey had a rat. Keep awake. A pie to the power of twelve, Manders. Me, sir? Yes, you, sir. Let me see. Now then... Three point one four one five nine um, two. It's Raffles. Raffles. Ahoy there! A rope coming down now, Raffles. I hope this knot better than the last one. Stunzel bent should be all right. Splendid. Thank you, Manders. Lack of day. I fear I'm something less than my usual sure foot itself tonight. I knocked over something rather noisy in crossing dear old Nabs's garden to ten to one it roused him. He'll be on my tail. Hurry up then. Less than my sure foot itself. <laughs> Oh, Manders, this night I have looked upon the wine when it was red and white and several colours in between, and have I been turned to stone? Or a pillar of um, society? No, Raffles, please hurry. I'll tell you the whole story. Certain young bloods of the town sought, and I must say here that I am applying the most uncharitable standards to their actions. Please, Raffles. Sought, I say, to intoxicate me in the hope of degrading my standard of play. Too loud, Raffles. The jacket? Yes, I suppose it is. But dash it all, it's not your place, boy, to criticise. Hush! What is it? Someone's coming up the stairs. Nabs? I think so. Quickly, then. No, wait! The other way, this way. How do you know? I sprinkled sugar on the left-hand stair. He's gone the long way round. Manders. The word for you is resourceful. Thank you, Raffles. A match for Ulysses himself. Thank you. <laughs> is that what they call you, perhaps? Your friends? Ulysses? No, they don't, I'm afraid. What do they call you? Bunny. Great heavens, Bunny? Yes, I'm afraid so. In, in celebration of what, exactly? Your fleetness of foot, perhaps? Your, uh, God forbid, your family life? No, Raffles. No, my ears. Your ears? Huh. Now, let me see. Yes, they are indeed generously proportioned, but the effect is not displeasing. I've seen worse, I assure you. Come on. And heard worse nicknames, too, for that matter. This is your door. Oh, is it? Oh, so it is. I think you'd better go in, you know. Yes. Look, Manders... You've saved my skin tonight, and not for the first time. If I'd been caught, I'd have been kicked out for sure, and that would have put the kibosh on my cricket. The county don't much care to take on new players who've been given the order of the alma matriarchal boot. So if I become a great cricketer, or even a halfway decent one, it'll be due to you. Oh, rats, Raffles. Oh, don't contradict, boy. Besides, it's not at all respectful to say rats to a senior. I just hope I may be able to do you a good turn someday. I think you should go in, Raffles. What? Oh, yes. Yeah. Assume the mantle of sleep and so forth. Very well. Now, don't let Nabs catch you. I shan't. Good night. Farewell, my resourceful rabbit. Resourceful? Resourceful. A compliment may sour in the space of ten or eleven years, and there came, inevitably, a time when I recalled the word with a mature irony, rather than with the simple pleasure of youth. By then, not only was my resourcefulness at the lowest of ebbs, but my resources were even lower, and I had chosen 
against all advice to recoup by the most dangerous of means. I learned to gamble, could not win, and never learned to lose. Losing, I continued to play, and losing again, I played again. A six. Bad luck, Manders. Deuced bad luck, old boy. Another brandy? Uh, yes, uh, if you please, my lord. There's some nights when the cards simply won't run your way, you know. Time to give up. Nonsense. You'll never win that way. Time to dig in. Double your stakes and dig in. That's the ticket. Uh, gentlemen, I think before we continue, we should bring matters up to date uh, financially. Right -o. Of course. Manders. Uh, yes? Will you settle in cash? Um, no. By cheque, then, that is satisfactory, is it not, gentlemen? Quite oh, satisfactory. Here's pen and ink. I left Upton's chambers in the Albany and made my way down the open stairs. It was foggy outside, a real London particular. From the Thames, less than a mile away, the melancholy sound of ship's horns seemed set to remind me of the course of action I had settled upon. Not tonight, but many weeks before, when I first realised the intolerable burden I had become to those who loved me, and one in particular, in whose eyes I now read pain more often than pleasure. As I crossed Regent Circus, this was the year before it was graced by Alfred Gilbert's sublime statue of Eros, I debated a decision which I believed to be the final choice of my life. Which bridge to choose? Westminster or Waterloo? Quite arbitrarily, I chose the latter, and some twenty minutes later found myself standing upon the gently rising curve of that beautiful structure overlooking the unseen, fog-wrapped waters of the Thames. I felt a sudden surge of unwanted courage. The moment had come. I shouldn't advise taking a dip. But the water here can be ruinous to a decent suit of clothes. Who's there? Your evil spirit, Bunny. Isn't that how the jolly old Bard of Avon put it? Beware the Ides of March and all that sort of thing. Well, this, if I'm not much mistaken, is, or, or are, the Ides of the aforesaid March, and no time at all Raffles. to be con... The very same. What are you doing here? I've been following you, right from the Albany. Dive chambers there, you know, though not for much longer if young Upton continues to keep me awake with his all-night baccarat rights. A.J. Raffles, gentleman of Middlesex. You follow my amateur dabblings. Of course. All England does. Don't play as often as I should. Dashed expensive being a gentleman. Yes. Yes. Now, I must confess, I know little oh, I'm of your... Of no importance. Except, didn't I read that you'd come into money? Mm, three years ago. It has been my curse. But now it's gone. Every penny. Yet you keep expensive company. You were leaving young Upton's chambers when I saw you. I was there, yes. I left something behind there, too. You did? Well, you needn't worry. Upton's a noisy young cast, but he never hang on to My something. My good name. How? Three checks. For how much? Altogether? Two hundred pounds. And worth? Nothing. Less than... The paper they were written on, as you were going to say. Or perhaps your family... I have none. Oh. You have a flat? In Mount Street. The furniture, perhaps. Oh, there's been a bill of sale on every stick for months. Mm -hmm. You used to be a literary little cuss, didn't you? Wrote for the mag, I seem to remember. Well, literature's the very thing nowadays. Any fool can make a living at it. Any fool couldn't write off my debts. There are more? Hmm. I see. All the same. If you'll excuse me, I really must go. No, wait. Please, let me go. Not until you tell me where you are going and what you mean to do. Can't you guess? Have you the pluck? Have you? Yes. Perhaps you have. 
Well, Bunny, my old friend, I'll be hanged if I let you go now. Here, have a Sullivan. Soothe the old nerves. Hmm? And don't worry, I'll put things right, I promise. Here. You saved my skin often enough in the old days. Didn't I once say I'd pay you back? You mean... You'll pay? Oh, great heavens, Bunny, no. I'm as hard up as you are. Oh, but Raffles... You may smile. Smile away indeed. Just because a fellow has chambers in the Albany and belongs to a club or two and plays a little cricket, it don't necessarily follow he has money in the bank. We're in the same boat, you and I. Perhaps we should think of pulling together. Together? I remember you'd stick at nothing for a pal. At nothing in this world. Not even a crime? Name your crime and I'm your man. <laughs> <laughs> what a desperate character you are, to be sure. But joking aside, we must have that money tonight, by hook or by crook. Let one of those checks get round to your bank. It will be dishonoured, and I with it. And then we must raise the wind tonight. Uh, at two o'clock in the morning? No time better. <laughs> but how? And... And where? And from whom at such an hour? From a friend of mine. You'd rouse him at this time of night? If he's in bed. He must be a very close friend. I have the run of the place and the latch key all to myself. And you want me to go with you? Absolutely. Then I must. Where does he live? In Bond Street. Come. Oh, good evening, Constable. May I ask what you two gents is up to? Enjoying the view. Is that against the law? The view, sir? Or what would be the view if it wasn't so damn foggy? <laughs> Earth hath not anything to show more fair, don't you know? Or, or is that Westminster Bridge? It's, it's Mr Raffles, isn't it? Indeed it is, Constable. I saw you knock that sentry against the players last summer. <sighs> <laughs> that was an innings and a half, if I may say so, sir. You may indeed, and thank you. Uh, it uh, may be useful one day to have admirers on the force. Your little joke, sir. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I won't delay you. You gentlemen will wish to be on your way, I'm sure. More important things to do than chat with a bobby on his beat, eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's the place. I'll be hanged if the lazy becker isn't in bed and asleep after all. That's your friend? The jeweler? In a manner of speaking. He uh, lives over the shop. This is the door. This is the one we want. Uh, hadn't we better give it up for tonight, Raffles? Uh, surely the morning will be time enough. Oh, not a bit of it. I have his key. We'll surprise him. Raffles. Footsteps. Is it your friend? It may be. He's the devil of a night bird. Not a sound, Bunny. We'll startle the life out of him. No. It's another Bobby, I think. They're everywhere tonight. Still not a sound. If that wasn't my... Um, Friend, he's probably sound asleep upstairs. We can still take a rise out of him. Now, slip off your shoes and follow me. My shoes? I'll brace our bunny, for heaven's sake. Come on. Well, I, I hope your friend appreciates this sort of joke. I'm sure he will. Now, let's have some light on the subject. But Raffles. Yes? Bare boards, stripped walls. Where have you brought me? This place is empty. Here, hold this lantern while I light it, will you? There's a little door on it, you see. What rotten trick are you going to play, Raffles? It's played. On me? Afraid so, Bunny. There's no one here, then? No one but ourselves. So that was nonsense about your friend in Bond Street who could let us have the money? Not altogether. 
It's quite true. I'm acquainted with Danby. Danby? The jeweller underneath. You're going to ask him for the money? Not ask. No, that would be unwise, I think. Put him in the embarrassing position of having to turn us down. Simply take it. Better idea, I usually find. Y you? A burglar? I told you I live by my wits. A burglar? But, Raffles, what the deuce does that make me? I'm not sure of the correct designation, Bunny. Burglar's mate, I suppose. But why couldn't you tell me what you were going to do? Why couldn't you trust me? I dropped as many hints as I could, old fellow. And you seem quite keen. Name your crime, I think you said. But that was just talk. This is... Yes, of course. Well, I shan't blame you if you pull out now. In fact, I advise it. You're not my man. Now, get out of it, dear boy, as quick as you can. Leave it to me. I know you won't give me away, whatever else you do. But I can't. I've never let anyone down in my life. Except myself and... Well, here's where to start, old fellow. Just tell me this. Why did you bring me here? Well, to be frank, this is not really a one-man job. You seem like a gift from the gods. Well, that settles it. I'm your man. You mean it? Yes. For tonight. And only tonight. Of course. Good old bunny. You've not changed in ten years. <laughs> but to business. We're wasting time. I know the shop because I bought a few things here. I know this upper part, too. It's been to let for a month, so I got an order to view and took a cast of the key before using it. But the one thing I don't know is how to make a connection between the two. At present, there's none. We might make it from up here, though I rather fancy the basement myself. Here, open that window, will you? Uh, this one? As quietly as you can. Now, let's see. Now, dash it all. This looks down on a back alleyway, but with no direct entrance to the shop. Fog seems to be clearing there. That's not so good either. In the basement it is, then. Follow me. And remember, though there's not a soul on the premises, you can't make too little noise. Right -o. Who is it? Shh, I said. Either a bobby or the watchman that all these jewellers run between them. He's the one to beware of. He's paid to spot just this kind of thing. Uh, does he have keys to this place? I think not. But my wish is father to the thought, to quote the bard. Right, shoes on again. Let's look at the cellar. This way. Now, this should be the door into the outside well. Bless them. They've left the key in the lock. Now, quickly across. Follow me. Oh, this door should be no problem. Hold the lantern. Here, uh, take, take the jemmy, too. Make yourself useful. Supposing someone hears? There's a risk we have to take for the moment. Won't be the last door we have to force tonight. Now, this, I take it, is the jeweler's cellar. Let's see what awaits us at the top of his stairs. Oh dear. That looks pretty solid. Uh, mahogany, I think. Uh, Raffles, don't you think we should give up? At the first obstacle? Nonsense, Bunny. Shine the light here, will you? Uh -huh. Now, let's see if any of these keys will do. Now, no chance. It's a foreign lock of some sort. Damn his cunning. Can't pick the thing either. I have to be cut out, and that will take us an hour. Never in my life have I seen anything more delicately done. I crouched at his side as if we had been fellow cracksmen all our days. Shine the lamp here. Uh -huh. That's better. 
He had produced a pretty embroidered case, intended obviously for razors, but filled instead with the tools of his secret trade. From this, he produced a metal bit capable of drilling a hole an inch in diameter and fitted it to a small but very strong steel brace. Having taken off his covered coat, he now took off his blazer, spread and folded them both neatly upon the top step, knelt on them, and turning up his shirt cuffs, went to work on the keyhole with brace and bit. Find the rock oil there, will you, Bunny? Yes. And keep this thing oiled as I work it. It took 47 minutes to cut round that lock. I watched spellbound and entranced. My moral sense and my sense of fear were together stricken by a common paralysis. I stood there, shining my light and plying my file of oil with a keener interest than I had ever brought to any honest avocation. Here comes the lock. Now. Excellent. Now, let's feel what lies beyond. It's a barred gate by the feel of it. Oh, no. He says nothing to worry about. As long as the lock's in the middle where I can get at it. Which it is. Oh, joy. Only let me pick it and we'll be through at last. Pass me that bunch of keys there, will you? What are these? They don't look much like keys. It's results that count, my dear fellow. Not appearances. There. Our host's office, I think. Very neat. Ah. Must do his entertaining here. Now have a look in that cupboard, will you, Bunny? Uh -huh. See if there ain't a bottle of something or other. You could do with a bracer. Some port here. And some glasses. Oh, pour me one, will you? And have one yourself. Uh, there's a box of cigars, too. Oh, better and better. Raffles? Hmm? Where's the, um... The boodle? Hmm. <laughs> Why, behind that great iron shutter there. Lord. Oh, don't look so depressed. It's nothing. The weak point of these curtain contraptions is the leverage you can get from below. You simply prize them up with a pointed jemmy. Ooh. I say, this port's not half bad. Can I help at all? You can indeed. The process, as I say, is simple, but it makes a hell of a racket. That's where you come in, old boy. I must have you overhead to knock when the street's clear. Come, we've lingered enough. Go back the way we came in. Oh, I, I'd pour myself another glass of port if I were you and pocket another cigar. This will take a good hour. I could hardly say that I relished the thought of a lonely vigil upstairs, yet there was something very stimulating in the vital responsibility which it involved. My duties were simple enough, merely to beat twice upon the floor with my foot if anyone approached, and once when all was clear again. The noises that I could hear below, with the exception of one metallic crash, were indeed incredibly slight, but slight as they were, they ceased altogether at each double rap from my heel. At last, the signal came, and I returned to the jeweller's office. Well? It's all done. A thousand pounds, if it's a penny worth. But everything's still in place? Not quite everything. I've had to leave all the stuff that can be seen from the street or through the peephole in the door, but there's plenty more. Rings by the dozen, see? But Raffles, your hands. Yes, yes, yes. Foolish of me. Managed to let the shutter fall across him. But never mind, they'll be right as rain in a week or so. Or in time for the cricket, at least. But you're, you're not admiring the boodle, old sport. Diamonds by the score. Diamond bracelets, diamond pendants, diamond necklaces. A beautiful sight, eh? And all negotiable. This will be cash by ten tomorrow. Your good name is secure, Bunny. <laughs> but come, we're wasting time. Help me on with my covered coat. There's a good fellow. Oh, it's heavier than when we came in. Had the devil's own job to persuade me, Taylor, to give me good deep pockets and plenty of them. Right, back downstairs. Have you, uh, have you done this sort of thing before, Raffles? My dear Bunny, you offend me. Do I look like a beginner? How many times before? Not often enough to destroy the charm. Never, unless I'm cursedly hard up. 
That doesn't exactly justify it, I know, and I don't try to. The distribution of wealth is badly out of kilter to begin with. I simply play my small part in redressing the balance. Now, did you hear about the Thimbleby diamonds? Well, of course. They were stolen at Christmas. That was my last venture, and a rotten lot of pace they turned out to be. Raffles. Oh, well, come now, confess. Did you not find yourself elated by the events of the evening? It's an elation I don't much care to experience again. No, it's only a simple matter. Wait. What is it? Voices. By Jove, you're right. Outside the street door. Damn me if it's not the constable and the watchman. Have you a, have you a rope in your kit? A light one, yes. But I can't get down a rope with these hands, old boy. Must risk doing them for good. No, there's, there's nothing for it. We must simply brazen it out. After all, it's, it's not the jeweller's door we'll be using. No, no, the, the watchman will know these rooms are empty. Quickly, upstairs. We'll get out through the back window. Look, best save yourself and the boodle. Give me the rope. What are you doing? Uh, this loop is for your foot. Step in it. The famous stencil bend, eh? Yes, but not unlike it. Now, take one twist round your shoulders and sit on the ledge. I'm going to lower you down. You'll never take the weight. I won't have to. If I give the rope a couple of turns about these pipes, the friction will take the strain. But, Bunny, I... Please, no argument. Now, hurry. Come on. Still some life in these curls. And then fill my glass high, Bunny. This is no time for the niceties of social behaviour. Oh, that reminds me. Something for you. Picked it up in the shop. A cigarette kiss? Silver. Uh, quite a nice pattern, I think. I thought you'd like it. As a job memento. Remind you of your only excursion from the straight and narrow. Now you can settle down as a stalwart pillar of society, a blameless paragon to your loved ones, a glowing example to your peers. There. Well, aren't you going to say something? Yes, Raffles. Rats, Raffles. In The Ides of March by E.W. Hornung, dramatised for radio by David Buck, Jeremy Clyde was A.J. Raffles and Michael Cochran, Bunny Manders. Young Bunny was played by James Dykes, Lord Upton by George Parsons, his cronies by Graham Blocky and Sean Prendergast, and the constable by John Church. The Raffles theme music was composed by Jim Parker. The sound balance was by Keith Perrin. And the production was by Gordon House. <laughs>